Okay, so this is the final video in the Axis series. Okay, so I talked about the 6th, 12th, 1st, 7th, 4th, 10th, 3rd, 9th, um, 5th, and 11th, and now we are here at 2nd and 8th, which is an interesting dynamic. So again, when we are thinking of the Axis, we are thinking of the houses that are directly across from one another on your astrological wheel. And so when you're looking at your birth chart, if there are planets in the second house and the eighth house or south node, north node energy, the importance here is to understand where the energy is coming from, which one has the most um, influence, right? And I'll dive a little bit more deep. I'll dive deeper into that. So when we look here, we have to understand we're dealing with the second house, which is ruled by Venus and the eighth house ruled by Pluto, Mars. And so already we know there's a different energy there. Second house, we are dealing with things that are um, monetary. We are dealing with our possessions. We are dealing with the physical. We are dealing with things we enjoy. Um, the connection to money, when you think of Venus ruling that second house, is we earn. What we earn allows for us to collect and possess and own things, right? When we think of the eighth house, Mars and Pluto, now this eighth house requires us to have to obtain from outside sources that aren't only us. The eighth house also has a bunch of serious topics in it. Again, I have a video, I have a playlist where I talk about all the houses and their meanings. This video is to focus on the, the, the you know, the opposition between the second and the eighth house. Second house, Venus. Venus seeks to attract. Venus seeks to attract. Um, Venus also can have a relaxed demeanor or Venus can have a relatively calm sense of acquiring. It is not as aggressive as eighth house because with the eighth house, we have to take, and I don't mean this in an, in an aggressive way, but the eighth house is we're trying to join power with something else. We are trying to receive from something else, okay? That is why the eighth house is often known to talk about joint assets, debt, taxes, other things as well. The eighth house is where we are trying to become something from sources. We are trying to transform, which requires us to have some level of power, influence, and control. Eighth house. That's why it has all those serious topics in it. Whereas we are dealing with a Venus house, you're dealing with second house. We're trying to hold on to what we have, our possessions. This deals with sustainability. It deals with self-sufficiency. So the second house can relate to how we make our money right? How we make our money, um, what our values are about money, what are our attitudes about finance, money, um, the things that we own. Does a person have a really capricious, you know, mindset about money where it's like they may have Neptune there and they're like, well, it's important, but I want to make money off my dreams. Do they have Saturn there? They're very disciplined in terms of their finances, their money, their saving abilities, okay? We're the eighth. We're now trying to receive from others, or from the outside world, right? When you're thinking of Mars and Pluto, Mars is act. I'm getting something. Mars is, I have a plan. Pluto is, I'm embedding myself inside of something. I am really ingraining myself so that I can get, I can absorb this and have this for myself. And when I say that, it doesn't always mean I'm saying Pluto placements are always insidious or malicious, but because sometimes Pluto can be, as we know, but Pluto is about control and I'm taking something and I am now transforming myself from the substance of what it is. Whereas the second house is this earth energy. We're thinking of Taurus in the second house association. This is earthy. This is material gains. The eighth house, we can also look at this as more of the um, the phys not the physical gains. This is more of the emotional gains. It is more of the manifestation of things that we wish to acquire, which requires a different, more intense energy. That's an eighth though. So we start to dive deeper. We understand that Scorpio energy is associated with the eighth house. And so when we think of the eighth house, especially the planetary rulers, we are now dealing with intensity. We're dealing with emotions as well. It's not so transparent as the themes of the second house. We have to really drill deep to understand the motivation. So the eighth house, when we talk about obtaining and joining assets and joining resources and all of those things, transforming through the means of others, right? Transforming other people's money is eighth house. Second house is our money, right? When we look at it, the eighth house though requires us to dive deeper to understand what is the motivation. 
Whereas the second house can be more, I want to obtain money. I want resources. It is very transparent. It is very clear. But sometimes you can have people that don't know what their motivation is. You can have people with second house placements and maybe they actually are successful and they have money in their bank accounts and they have a property, but they're still not happy. When really they need to tap into their eighth house because it's really like, but you're not obtaining the things that give you the most emotional satisfaction and sense of fulfillment. You're not deeply, deeply um, committed. That is eighth house. So sometimes you can have people where if things come too easy for them, it can be difficult working with the second house if the second house is stronger. But same thing with the eighth house. You can have people who are too attached to what they want to obtain. And sometimes it's not always financial. The eighth house, again, we also are de dealing with anything that we we're motivated to want to cling on to, to have. When we talk about the eighth house, it also could be other people. It can be, the eighth house can lend itself to some level of possessiveness, right? Remember I said the second house is possessions. What have I obtained? What have I bought? What have I earned? Desire from the eighth house to have more, to be more, to acquire more, right? But sometimes people can get so obsessed with that it can lead itself to um, concepts of like overpowering others, trying to obtain. Um, remember, we think of the eighth house can represent things that are secretive. So you can deal with situations that are more so, you know, um, in, in an extreme way, um, manipulation, theft, um, taking from others in order to acquire more and have more, right? So you can sometimes see those themes there where you can have someone with a lot of eighth house energy. It's very strong. And depending on the placements and depending on as depending on aspects and other things in the chart, you could have a person where it's like power and control and taking and seeking things is so important that the person forgets how or doesn't know how to really obtain on their own means. Or a person who's always had luck from other people. They have Jupiter in the eighth house. They've always been given things. They've always been provided things. Um, you know, their their sense of control and power and influence comes from things that are inherited financially. Eighth house can also represent inheritance. So when you think of the second house, um, in that aspect, it could be a person, you have a placement there, but you're too relaxed. You're too lenient, right? Um, you know, because of the things that have been already given to you. So you can have people that struggle with self-sufficiency, um, learning when to take from others or learning when you have to make it on your own and learning just how to maybe blend those two energies as well. Build yourself up. You have to learn how to sustain oneself, especially if your North Node is in the second house. Maybe you come from a past life of earning and attaining from things bestowed to you, given to you, right? Feel a little bit more of a pride, sense of pride in what you're doing because you have a second house energy, you have a second house um, north node. With the south node, let's say in eighth, especially with planets there, it's to focus on what others can do to empower you, okay? But north node is like, but once you start getting more and more experience with how you can create as well. You can build yourself up. You can gain a greater sense of confidence and you start to care more about the more, um, the things that are tangible. Um, the second house are the things that are tangible. The eighth house can be more of the emotional fulfillment we get from situations. And so for some people with eighth house energy, if you're too consumed with power, money, influence, things like that, it can sometimes mean there's unresolved issues emotionally. And that's why you're overcompensating with that. But the feeling of never quite being satisfied without the help of other people can be a south node in eighth house energy, where you're really here through your second house to learn how to see the results of which you have. It doesn't mean you won't get help from people. It doesn't mean you can't accept things from people, but it means that you're here to learn a different experience. Sun in second house, you are self, you need, you need to really shine by doing things on your own accord. You need to learn how to have your own things. Okay. Difficulty sometimes not entangling yourself with the, you know, when people have eighth house placements, um, in, in, let's say there's retrograde or there's south known in eighth house and you have plants in the second house, you're trying to balance it out. It's like, well, you have difficulty not entangling yourself in the affairs of others. You can have people where it's like, oh, you're self-sufficient, but your eighth house shows you keep giving to other people. You keep giving to your family members. There's always a money battle or fight. Sometimes you can have eighth house placement people that have there's power struggles with money and the people in their lives, right? So you also may have to do some work in terms of how do you detach that? Again, energy that's very eighth house, scorpionic energy can struggle with detaching from something it feels it has to invest in. And so you can also see the a different experience where maybe it's not a personal one where your second and eighth house is causing you a lot of personal issues and how you accumulate and how you achieve, but it can be 
you're stuck providing for other people or you feel like, you know, I have to take care of the whole family. Um, I have to take care of my extended family because I'm the one that made it, like that type of dynamic. The second house placement, especially North Node, you are also here to learn how to take care of things you own. You are here to learn how to take care of what you possess. And I know we can look at second house or we can look at things um, in that in that topic and such as like, oh, is we talking about materialism and I don't want to be materialistic, but it's not really about materialistic. It's okay. Like we live in a physical world and some people because of their north node or their chart setup are here to invest in things that are physical. You might be here to invest in yourself. You're here to invest in property. Maybe you have second house and fourth house placements and you're a property manager. You're learning how to care for things because maybe in a past life or past situation, you're so consumed with emotions and people were always emotionally driving you. You always felt that you had some obligation to the emotions that now you, you're here to have a different lesson. The eighth house tendency is going to be the serious things. And sometimes you can see people that run away from eighth house to make money. I'm going to run away from the deep things that I feel. I'm going to run away from transformation. Now, truly, eighth house can be a great house for using whatever you accumulate, using whatever you're bestowed on you, using whatever to empower yourself, to build yourself up. How do you use other people's resources? And resources doesn't have to mean somebody's giving you an allowance. It can simply mean if you are um, given an opportunity, people invest in you, people loan you money, um, people are willing to support you through school, people are willing to do that, and then you, you, you use those opportunities that you get to advance yourself and move forward. If you're a son in eighth house, I have a video where I talk about the son in eighth house. But you can sometimes get so entangled in the emotional side of things that you forget the importance of the things that you're here to do. You do have people where it's like, it's not even about necessarily money all the time. It can simply be about deep, traumatic, dramatic situations they're dealing with, trying to uncover their true feelings. And, and again, let's say you have a person with planets in the eighth house and they have Chiron in the eighth house, right? And you're dealing with a lot of deep, deep things that keep you busy. And then your second house has maybe a planet there. Maybe your second house has Mercury there and you have really good ideas. Maybe your Mercury's retrograde. You have really good ideas, but you struggle to execute them to make money, right? Um, because you're so busy with eighth house topics. You're so consumed. And so the importance here is going to be understanding where in your life you do want to take care of the things that are physically in front of you. It is not materialistic to take care of things that you find that of value in a past life we're here on earth right and again we're spiritual beings but we all have possessions we have items we have things we're attached to so in a past life it could have been a lot of emotional turmoil for people where you were so consumed emotionally that you didn't own anything maybe it was difficult for you maybe you didn't have anything of your own and now you have second house placements and building yourself up learning to do it. and it can be very frustrating sometimes to have to do things on your own it's like well all these other people have help and i don't but you also could be the person where you are here to build yourself up because what you do is going to help other people. So you sometimes can see that. Let's say you have a person with eighth house placements. Okay, you have eighth house placements. You have Mars there. Um, let's say you have Mars. Let's say you have Saturn. Okay, so you could be like sometimes emotionally withdrawn, but you're a person that's really dedicated to certain things. You're very serious about the different things. Maybe not emotionally very forthcoming, um, but you have Saturn there. Maybe you have Saturn in Aquarius. So eventually your resources can help a collective of people, can help a group of people, but it only can happen once you build yourself up and learn how you can um, better facilitate the things that you own. Second house, manage your own stuff first. So sometimes the eighth house is not always going to be about the same types of topics of um, gaining and getting. But remember, the theme is always going to be the same. Eighth house requires transformation through things that are outside of us as well. The things that we, things that we go for, the things that we see we want it. And we know this is a part of something that's going to help us develop. Venus in the second house is different because it's about attracting things that are going to give you a greater sense of stability. Venus is about flow. I'm flow, bring the money in, bring in what I have, okay? Venus is that, that energy. Whereas when we're dealing with more intense, and again, when I say intense, I'm not saying one planet is better or superior to the other. It is just simply a different energy. Where Mars and Pluto is, I need this. I'm going to obtain this. I'm going to get this, right? So the eighth house requires there to be a little bit more of that um, 
direction, intensity about what it is that you want. Whereas Venus in second house energy is more about steadily building things up. Remember, Venus is not Venus is not a planet that is known for being very quick. Um, like it's not a planet that is known for rushing. It's not it's not surprising. It's not Uranus. It is not. Um, so it's not the same as like Pluto transit, which we know can be decades. But what I'm saying is that, you know, Venus is not a fast energy. It's not desire, designed to be a fast energy. It accumulates. It attracts. Um, Venus is is bringing things in. It is wants to be relaxed. It doesn't like to be stressed. It doesn't like to be dealing with chaotic things. That is eighth house can deal with the chaos of things, right? So the importance here is going to be understanding where in your life you need to balance certain energy. Your second house is Again, whatever's there, use it to build yourself up. The eighth house is going to help you see what is it that you need to obtain from those around you, but how can you also use what's around you, those resources, in order to really transform yourself and even um, the lives of other people that you are close to, that you feel some sense of obligation to, right? So we're not looking at it through the lens of just, oh, I'm just taking, taking, taking. But again, we have to understand this on a level of the taking can also be emotionally. And this idea of this eighth house being about how we're integrating things and integrating people and situations it's a very internal process dealing with the eighth house right but at the same time it it, it it it's there's so many other influences that are outside of us that are important through the eighth house right you can see intimacy through the eighth house joint assets as i've said earlier of when you owe people money that shows up in the eighth house right so it's the deep connection the um, it's almost like the the unspoken contract between people the more um the serious contract the reading between the um the, the the fine print is eighth house seventh house is literally marriage contract business contract it's very visible when we deal with the eighth house everything is not always visible so the importance is going to be understanding what you're what you're committed to why you're committed to it um is there something that's becoming a little too obsessive do you feel there's a good balance in terms of the things that you're able to give versus the things that you're able to receive, especially when we're dealing with other people and the things that we would sh we accumulate and the things that we are able to bring and offer, right? It could be a person in a marriage, in a relationship, and, you know, the partner is always taking care of them, right? They're very entangled in that. But then something happens and now you're single and you now you have to rely on that second house, okay? So... Those are themes. And the thing I want to leave the note on with axis, the axis and whether it's six and 12 or second and eight, whatever the case may be, remember, transits happen in our charts. And so there could be times in your life where you're going to resonate more with your eighth house and your second house, or your second house of your, your eighth house. But remember, either way, there are themes you need to deal with dealing with both topics. So it's very important that you understand the full range of second the full range of the second house, the full range of the eighth house, because those topics are going to come up and fully understanding what they mean can better give you a greater sense of security and also a greater sense of understanding how you can, um, you know, achieve and build from things that are provided for you, um, opportunities that you acquire versus opportunities that you build yourself.